Hey guys, welcome back to Electrical Car Repair Life. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. Today will be super helpful video, guys. If you have a BMW, guys, X3, any generation, any model, guys, doesn't matter if you have four six cylinder gasoline diesel or engine and you're trying to test your coolant temperature sensor. Stay with us and we'll explain, guys, how to do that. And you can find out if your sensor is good or bad or if it needs to be replaced or not, guys. Now, Sometimes if you think you have a bad coolant temperature sensor, it could be just a broken wire somewhere. Sometimes it could be a bad computer. And why to waste money on a temperature sensor when you can just test it before you actually guys buy a new one? Okay, why we are making that video? So we can save you guys money. All the tools and parts that we use guys, or if you need to buy a new sensor, we'll share the links in the description of the video below. We share them for your convenience and you can see where we get all our tools and parts from. Now. Before we continue guys, let me introduce you to our channel. Every single car we get at the shop, we make at least 200 free repair videos. Why we do that? Simply because our mission as a shop is to save you as much money as we can. All we need guys in return, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. That way we can keep providing this free information to you guys. Now, uh, this is the sensor. I'll show you here guys what we'll be using and how we're going to test it. You need just the minimum supplies that you can actually find almost everything at home. Uh, and uh, this is the sensor that what it looks like if you have a BMW X3 we have a video that actually explains how to remove and replace it and I will try to put the link in the description of the video below so please check it out I'll share it for your convenience that being said guys check out this channel how to repair guys this is our main channel and we have helped guys more than 71 million people guys and it keeps growing uh, we have information that can save you thousands of dollars so please guys check it out what we're going to need a pot of water you will need to have water different at different temperatures guys and we will explain that as we go so you can use your microwave to heat up your water you can use a cooking stove we'll be using okay that propane torch just to heat it up then you get the sensor and you have two wires on the back side now that's where we'll be connecting our voltmeter but we'll use okay alligator clips that way everything will be okay secured and it will not be moving so we don't have to hold the wires there all the time it can hold it for us so now we have it connected to the voltmeter we're going to click here to 20k ohm reading okay perfect and now i'm going to show you guys what we'll be doing now we have that water which is a temperature okay let's check it out temperature of the water 23 degrees celsius 23 now those are the graphs that we'll be using to actually test our sensors and if you look at it guys at around 20 degrees our reading should be around 2100 ohms and about 2800 ohms it should be in this line okay that's where your reading should be this is the temperature this is the ohm reading this is for the left graph here this is for the right graph okay so now at 20 guys okay we were okay we started we were 20 2400 and we were right on the spot as we start heating up the water guys we started a little bit quick but as we start heating up the water your ohm meter should start dropping and i'm going to switch to the next setting 2k ohms so we have 1800 now so what's the temperature of the water okay let's compare it 33 degrees 1600 ohms at 33 degrees okay it should be between 1400 and 1800 ohms and you can see ours was 1600 so that's great now if you're using fahrenheit this is the same graph in fahrenheit this is the temperature this is the ohm reading so you can figure it out guys now we'll keep heating up and we're going to compare the value of the water to the table okay now of our reading so let's stir it up so okay let's turn more 45 degrees guys 950 ohms 45 degrees so you should see that we should be around 800 ohms and 1200 ohms so we're right on the spot guys now we keep doing that and we're going to reach next temperature next milestone okay stir 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 about 55 degrees guys at 55 this reading should be 600 we have 650 so it should be between you can see 600 and about 780 guys so we're right on the spot guys we just keep doing that and we compare our reading to the one in the table and make sure that we get the same okay in that range so everything's good 62 degrees our reading was 500 at 62 
Okay, and you can see 60 will be right here, 502, 610, 20. So everything so far, guys, looks amazing. So we're going to do it at 70, lastly, and that should definitely, guys, okay, do the trick. Okay, two more degrees. Okay, right there, 70 degrees, 375 at 70, and according to our thing, we should be at about 350 to 450. So definitely, guys, it's a good sensor. We don't even need to test more. That tells us that it's a great sensor and you can figure out that it's working correctly. So if you're using Fahrenheit, this is the graph. If you're using Celsius, this is the graph right there. Hopefully, guys, the video will be helpful. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for more help and see you guys next time.